But as you look at the next, I mean, just like the horizon of the church in Canada, not just mm. short term, but beyond the pandemic, um, succession is one of the things that we talked about. What do you think are the big conversations, the big, the big things that the church in Canada are going to wrestle with in the next decade? Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I think succession is going to be a driving, I mean, we're just going to see it over and over again. We're going to see success stories and failure stories. It's interesting because I think pre COVID I would have leaned more toward the end of, Hey, the big are going to get bigger. Uh, but I, but I like that large churches are going to get larger and it's those medium sized churches that are likely going to struggle the most. That's what I would have said. Um, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said that the smaller churches or church plants or more niche focused churches wouldn't thrive. I actually think they can and will and always will because they are um, it's new on the one hand, but also you're heavily focused and targeted. So yeah. there's agility and adaptability that is strong for church plants and why I love new churches and new campuses, because there's so much that you can change and innovate and experiment with and reach the lost in and through those. I would have said all of that pre COVID. I actually have no idea how things are going to land mm. after this because I think on the one end, one hand, there's going to be a lot of churches that actually die out of all this because they were small and they were struggling anyway. And with the giving and the economy and all that stuff, I think they're just going to shut down and they're, or they're not going to be, or there it's going to be three or four or five months of not meeting and they're not going to be able to open up again. So sadly, sadly, I think that's going to be a reality, but what happens out of that? Hmm. Are we actually going to see a rise of house churches? Are we actually going to see um, people flock to the churches that have done online church well, and are we going to see larger churches get even larger because of that? Or are we going to see large church empty out and large churches emptied out because people don't want to be in mass gatherings anymore. So I literally just, I have no idea, but if after all this is said and done, man, I pray desperately that we would see a greater measure of collaboration Mm. happening and that we would see people. And this is how we're working toward how we are discipling our church and our parents, that we would see people so own their spiritual growth and their life as a follower of Christ, that when we gather together, it really is more of a celebration than it is a feeding. Hmm. Because I think there's a lot of people who kind of consumeristically wait for Sunday to be fed and to be nourished instead of having been fed and having been nourished, come with a posture to give rather than take. So, man, I do pray that together as we move beyond all this, that we would have the greatest celebrations and the greatest parties that the world has ever known. Because, I mean, that's, I mean, we are celebrating the, 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 the most incredible thing, right? Jesus having come to give us new life and abundant life in the midst of death and sorrow and pain and sickness and the abundant life that he promises, not only eternally, but right now. And I, and I really do hope and pray that the church becomes known for that, that it's not the dead church, but it's the alive church. 